Hey guys, it's Elena. Today we're going to be doing another acrylic pour abstract painting in Procreate and we will be using a black background this time with some blue and purple and pink colors and we will be using my acrylic pour brushes for Procreate and I hope that you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. So this time let's do a canvas that is a little bit bigger. I'm going to be going with 20 by 16 inches. And a lot of people ask why I use big canvases and the main reason is just that it's much easier to scale down than it is to scale up. So if you make something you really like but you make it on a really small canvas you can't really size it up into something that you can print into a nice big print. So that's the main reason why I do that. So let's change the background color. The default is white but I'll just tap where it says background color. And you could make a pure black background by double tapping on the black. Or if you want to have a slightly color with a black with a slightly colored tint to it, I've got my uh, fluid acrylic blue and pink color palette open here. So there's two potential colors that we could make a black background from. We could do the red and then that's a bit too light still. So you could go to the value tab. And where it says B, just make it a bit darker. So you can see this is not quite black. It has a bit of a reddish tint to it. And you could do the same thing with blue and just bring it down to around eight to 10% or even less like 6%. This has a blue tint to it, but it's still kind of black looking. And I think I'm gonna keep it on this slightly bluish black at 6% on the B here. So now that I've got my background set up, I wanted to, I'm using my acrylic pour brushes for Procreate and those are for sale in the link that you see on the screen. Um, if you don't have these brushes, you can still use Liquify, which comes with Procreate and you can follow along as best you can with that. Um, so I'm just going to be using these brushes though. Um, so for fluid pour number seven, that's the one that we're going to be using to start out with. So I'm just going to take a couple of colors and make some blobs right in the middle. And I'm, then I'm going to turn it into a bit of a burst with liquify. So I'll just use a blue here. And this brush comes out with quite a lot of cells in it already. And we're going to be stretching most of this out but this also works well without any liquify because it's got all these nice cells in it already i'm trying to use a mix of a couple different colors that go well together some dark and some light Maybe just a little bit more blue. No, I just want a little bit more pink. Maybe a bit of lighter purple as well. Okay, and with that little blob created, you can make some interesting textures using these brushes without liquify as well. That's a tutorial for another day. But now we are actually just going to smush this all around with liquify. So I'm going up to my adjustments menu, liquify. And I'll just go ahead and use push for now in a fairly big size. And then I will turn this into sort of a burst shape. And the cells will kind of dissipate but they do create some interesting sort of tree ring textures when you when you pull them out like this Gonna make it a bit smaller and then try to 
kind of like how we've got some black coming out here so I'm going to try and do that a bit more here. Sometimes I like to make the liquify brush quite small and then run it along the edges to add some wiggle wobbles. <laughs> I'm not sure what to call those, but I'm sure you see what I mean. So I'm just kind of making a bit of empty space. I'm not going to call it white space because we have a black background. I love how when you have a smaller brush and you're kind of running it along here, it feels a little bit like just running a paintbrush or stick through it because it, it just sends it all into little ripples. Sometimes if something is looking a bit blurry like this, you can go in with a smaller brush under Liquify as well and just give it a bit more of a complex texture like this by just kind of stirring it around. I'm really loving this ribbon effect here. I'll probably just leave that alone for the most part. Well, this is looking really blurry, so I'm going to mess with it. Just trying to take advantage of the black background as much as I can for that nice contrast. And like I've said in other tutorials, I do like to have the distortion most of the way up when I'm doing this, or all the way up, because I just think that it gives a nice realistic effect of just ripples coming through and it's also nice to have some of these wisps coming out for this type of pour and this is the momentum you can see how i go down here and it goes all the way up there. That's because the momentum's up pretty high. So if I do it again here, it doesn't have the same effect. But I also like to keep that up fairly high. I think one of the reasons I've been resistant to liquify in the past is because it can get a bit cartoony looking if, if you don't have a lot of texture in it. So it can take kind of a, you can have, you need to have a bit of a light touch with it and just pay attention to details rather than just, you know, liquefying the whole thing and then just calling it a day. Kind of look in, look in on the details and see what it's looking like and give it another, give it another go with a smaller brush wherever you need to and have lots of ripples in it.
This one I feel is a bit too blobby, so I'm going to capitalize on this this empty spot here and sort of push that out so that we have a we have some negative space in the middle with a nice blurred blue coming out of that. And I do really like this tree ring effect on the outside here. Some of this part where there was some overlapping of different colors is starting to get a bit muddy, so that's why I'm just going in here and just mixing with a small brush. A small uh, brush size on the liquify, that is. We're still on liquify this whole time. We have not used, we've only used that one brush so far. We will use quite a few more. But this is all, all this mixing here is just liquify. There is another liquify thing that I wanted to show you before we turn this on. Well, first, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, zoom out a bit on this. See if I'm happy with that. I honestly feel like this here could come out a bit further. So I'm just going to pull this out a bit further. This is called push, but I use it for pulling more often than I do for pushing, really. I just wanted to get some tendrils coming out because as I zoomed out, it didn't quite look very full. So I want to cover a bit more of the page here. bit more here. Okay, before I turn off liquify, I wanted to show you something that you can do once you've done a whole lot of pushing and, and tugging on what you've got here. You can go back to, you can go to reconstruct. And this means that before you've turned off liquify, you can take some parts of the piece back to the way they were before you did liquify selectively. And so a lot of people use this for cells and it can be a bit tedious because you have to do each one separately. But I think especially with this brush that we've used because it already has quite a lot of cells in it, if we use this, we can get some interesting cells underneath. So let's just try it out and see. And you can make the brush rather small in order to get these cells. You can see it kind of pops up a little bit there, what was underneath before. And you can get some interesting looks from this. And just like when we use expand for this, you have to kind of keep dynamically changing. I don't like that. You have to keep dynamically changing the size, otherwise you'll end up with a lot of cells the same size. And that does not look realistic at all. So I'm just gonna do this in a couple places just so that we have another tool available to us. And I will be adding more cells with the cell brushes as well. If you're, for instance, what I just did there, if you try it on an area where there was originally nothing, you'll just get a round circle, which is not very exciting.
So this is just a, another way of resurfacing what is underneath in order to get a cell. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn liquify off. And once you've done that, you can't do this reconstruct again. It's only when you've turned on liquify, messed things up, then you can reconstruct from that, that iteration. So I'm turning that off and I am going to go to my blender and select some dynamic cells under the, the smudge tool. I'm going to go with number one. So this means that I'm not adding anything new. I'm just blending what's here. So if I put my pen down here, I will hopefully get a range of purple and pink cells coming out. And I'm just going to keep dragging from one color area to another in order to get some interesting cell formations. I like how that looks. This is a good way if you're not not really happy with a certain area like I wasn't all that happy with this so I just dragged some cells onto it and I like it better like that. You can also drag from the background in and this way you can get some interesting lacing effects on the edges. I'm going to make the brush a bit bigger and then go on here for some lacing effects. It will tend to splash some, some cells up on the background and then sort of have an erasing effect on, on this. That was too much. And I think I will go for another cell brush as well. I think I'll go for number five and continue coming from the background in. I'm gonna make the brush a bit smaller. I think I'll switch to number two. And I, I like the look where some of this is splashing up around, so I think I will add a few more of those. So I'm going still on the smudge tool I'm going to go back to number one and make it quite large and then I'll try splashing some of the color onto the background And I'm trying as much as I can to choose an area with more than one color because then that color, two of those colors get dragged out like this, the blue and the green, which makes things much more interesting. So now we've got the purple and the blue over here. I am getting very cell happy right now. Probably should be careful not to go overboard. Okay. I 
think that I will try to stop there. And as a final touch, I'm going back to liquify. And this time I'll use expand on a small size on some of the cells, in particular the cells that are in the middle here and overlapping with other colors in order to make that all a bit more cohesive. And again, changing the size as I go. And some of these ones that I did before are a bit too round and perfect, so I'm messing those up a bit as well. So I'm just going anywhere that feels a bit messy, like there's too many different colors and patterns showing through on top of each other, like here. We've got that problem a little bit. I'm going to make some of these outliers a bit bigger. Just to add some interest. And I might do the same on the opposite side as well, just for some focal points. like how that looks. I guess that was one of these that had sort of an outline. I just pushed it out. Okay, maybe I can do something similar here. So now I'm just scanning and checking for anything that is looking too messy, not cohesive. I think this maybe could use a bit more. So I'm turning that off now and just having another look to see how I feel about this and whether I want to add any metallics. I think I'd like to try adding just a bit of metallics in the middle. So I'm adding a new layer and going to go to my fluid acrylic dark palette that comes with the brush set and then I'm choosing this green here and then back to the brush tool under the acrylic pour brushes I'm going to choose fluid metallic this time and add just a little bit to some of these areas in the middle and I don't want to overpower it but I also don't want it to you know look like I've only just half half thought it I haven't thought it through by only adding a couple. So I'm just going to add a couple little hints here and there. 
and I'm double checking that I added a new layer. Yes, very important. If you start to see everything looking kind of white and not gold, then it might be that you have not added a new layer because it will look really washed out if it's metallics on top of other things. And you could also use the gilding leaf brush for this. Um, but I just wanted to try with the fluid metallic because it has a bit more of a random texture. And you're not quite, you never can be quite sure what's going to come out. It's got a bit of a pattern to it. So this would be like if you have finished a fluid painting and then you've added some adhesive and you're adding a bit of metallic foil or maybe you've added some metallic ink to it. And I always like to include a little bit of metallic. And if, if you're not liking the pattern, just lift up your pen and then go again because the pattern sort of resets itself when you do that. So if you want more control, then you'd be choosing the gilding leaf. If you want more of a random texture, that's what this one is for. Maybe just a bit more and we'll keep it in the center. I really don't want to mess this up because I'm super happy about those tree ring effects there so maybe I'll just choose this darkish area here to add a bit of metallic I'm basically just scribbling right now and the pattern is just coming out however it wants to. I do think I need a bit here. Just a little bit more over here and then I think we are done. I usually tend to zoom out quite a lot as I'm doing this sort of piece because I want to get a bigger picture and just see if it's if it's looking how I want. I do keep adding a bit more because I don't want it to look like I have not thought it through and only added a tiny bit of metallic. If you're going to do metallic, just do a fair amount so that it looks like it's on purpose. I think we are just about there. Let us just move darken this just a little bit more. Can't stop messing with it. Okay, I think I'm really done now. And yeah, so thank you so much for watching. And I hope that this was helpful to you. And please do let me know if you have any questions or comments and I'd love to see what you have been creating if you want to tag me on Instagram Elena Jensen 
or use the hashtag Elena Jensen brushes or you can share if you're in our Facebook group I'd love to see your work in there as well so anyway I will talk to you next time thank you so much Thank you.